Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the acute inflammatory response and anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, so I want to start this video with a little correction. Okay, so after betting that it would be synthetase, I've actually checked this and it's wrong. It is prostacycline synthase, and now I have to replace it twice. So this should be prostacycline synthase, or prostaglandin I2 synthase, rather than prostaglandin I2 synthetase, or prostacycline synthetase. So it's prostacycline synthase, that is this enzyme uh, within the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, which converts prostaglandin H2 into prostaglandin I2. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's now turn our attention to another um, pathway, basically, that occurs within type 1 activation. So, we've seen uh, that the calcium going up in the cytoplasm of the cell, one leads to the activation of cellular phospholipase A2, which triggers this whole pathway, which produces prostacycline. It's also actually going to activate another, um, another enzyme, uh, which is involved in producing a vasodilatory uh, dilatatory substance. Okay, so, the calcium has gone up in the cytoplasm, okay? Now what will happen is this calcium is going to bind to a protein known as calmodulin, which is within the cytoplasm. So let me give you a little bit of information about calmodulin, because generally it's a protein that people have heard of, but they don't actually know anything about it. Okay, so let me tell you something about calmodulin. So calmodulin has two states. It has a state where it's bound to calcium and a state where it isn't bound to calcium. So at first I'm drawing the state where it isn't bound to calcium. So the state where it isn't bound to calcium is what's known as apocalmodulin. Okay, and it has this sort of hunched over structure if you look at this. The um, two lobes of calmodulin are, as they're called, are bent back towards one another. So. Calmodulin has these two lobes that are connected to each other via this linker in the middle. Now, one is known as the N lobe, so we'll let this be the N lobe, and the other is known as the C lobe. Okay, and there is a nice linker between the two. Okay, and each of these lobes, both the N lobe and the C lobe, have calcium binding sites basically. So each lobe has two calcium binding sites. So the N lobe has two calcium binding sites, the C lobe also has two calcium binding sites. Now, when calcium binds to these binding sites on the uh, lobes of calmodulin, what happens is that it will change conformation and it will unhunch, basically. The two lobes will move outwards, like so. Uh, however, the opposite happens to the linker. So the two lobes, the whole structure sort of straightens out, but then the linker goes really curvy. So the linker takes on an alpha helical structure, whereas before it had always had a linear structure. So this is a alpha helix connecting these um, two lobes together now. Whereas this was just a linear structure, so it was amino acid followed by amino acid followed by amino acid, but they weren't in an alpha helix spiral. Okay, and the change that has occurred is that four calcium ions are now bound uh, to these four calcium binding sites, one in each calcium binding site. So here's one calcium, here's another calcium, here's another, and here's another. Okay, and this structure where we have calcium bound to calmodulin, this is what's known as a calcium calmodulin complex. Okay. And there is a nice abbreviation for calcium calmodulin complex. Often it's abbreviated to CA2 plus for calcium. And then capital C, lowercase a, capital M is the shorthand for calmodulin. So apocalmodulin is also abbreviated to APO. And then it's the same abbreviation for calmodulin, capital C, lowercase a, uppercase N. Okay, so... When the calcium goes up in the cytoplasm of the cell, you're going to get four calcium ions binding to apocalmodulin proteins, which are within the cytoplasm of the endothelial cell. And this will convert the apocalmodulin into calcium calmodulin complexes. So we're going to get lots of calcium calmodulin complexes being formed. 
Now these are actually going to activate two important players. So we'll look at the first one initially. So the first thing they're going to activate is an enzyme known as ENOS, okay, which stands for endothelial nitric oxide synthase, okay. Now this enzyme is going to synthesize nitric oxide, basically, uh, and it's more correctly now called, which is why I've left a nice big space uh, next to ENOS, it's more correctly now called NOS3, which stands for nitric oxide synthase 3. So it's more correctly called NOS3. However, everyone still uses ENOS. Now the reason it's more correctly called NOS3 is because you can actually find ENOS in a whole host of tissues that are not endothelial cells. So calling it the endothelial nitric oxide synthase is a little bit uh, misleading. Okay, so it's proper name is now nitric oxide synthase free, but everyone still calls it ENOS. Okay, so ENOS uh, is going to start producing nitric oxide when you uh, activate it by binding calcium calmodulin complexes to it. Okay, so two calcium calmodulin complexes will bind to the ENOS enzyme, which is actually a dimer of two ENOS proteins, and those ENOS proteins will now start producing uh, nitric oxide. Okay, so what does nitric oxide do? Well, again, it's another vasodilatory molecule. Uh, so it's going to go to the vascular smooth muscle cells, okay, here, and it's going to cause them to relax. And when they relax, they're all going to increase in length. And that means that the whole circumference of this ring of smooth muscle cells is going to go up. And that means that you will dilatate that ring of vascular smooth muscle cells. And if you dilatate the ring of vascular smooth muscle cells, then you dilatate all of what's inside. So you dilatate the whole of the blood vessel. Okay, so it leads to vasodilatation, which is going to lead to a greater blood flow through the terminal arterioles, and therefore, again, a greater blood flow to the tissue. So it's also going to cause rubor and calor redness and uh, hot to the touch um, at this site of inflammation. Okay, and the purpose of that, again, is to uh, bring in more troops, to um, amplify the number of troops that we can potentially recruit from the blood into the interstitial space. Okay, uh, so, um, again, the um, reason that the endothelial cells in the capillaries and post-capillary venules would want to produce nitric oxide is so that the nitric oxide level is just going to gradually go up in the interstitial fluid of this inflamed tissue and therefore will be dilatating all of the terminal arterioles in that tissue. Okay, so this again causes vasodilatation. Okay, so let's now uh, turn our attention to the other target of uh, calcium calmodulin complexes. Okay, so the other target of calcium calmodulin complexes is that they're going to bind to and activate an enzyme known as myosin light chain kinase. So let me draw this enzyme here. Okay, so here we go. So then we've got a uh, calcium calmodulin complex here. Okay, that's attached to our um, myosin light chain kinase here. So let me put the calcium ions in. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so this big blob of an enzyme here, this represents myosin light chain kinase. Okay, and uh, myosin light chain kinase is often abbreviated to MLCK for short. Now, the name of this enzyme tells you exactly what it does. It phosphorylates myosin light chain. Um, okay, so let me just explain to you what myosin light chain is. Okay, so everyone knows what myosin is generally. It's this little protein that you find in skeletal muscle cells, you find it in smooth muscle cells, you find it in cardiac muscle cells, you find it in muscle cells. And it's involved in climbing up actin filaments and contracting those cells. Okay, so let me draw a picture of myosin. So if you were asked to draw a picture of myosin, you might draw something like this. You know it's got a 
fibrous tail and a little globular head, like so. This is a picture of what's known as myosin heavy chain. Okay, so this is not what myosin-like chain kinase is going to act on. Okay, and myosin heavy chain is rather confusingly also often abbreviated to MHC at your peril because MHC usually if you just say MHC to someone, they will not think myosin heavy chain. They will think major histocompatibility complex. If you know anything about the adaptive immune system, MHC will mean something to you. Okay, um, and the myosin heavy chain has around its neck another little protein that's sort of wrapped around its neck. And this is the myosin light chain. Okay, so this is myosin light chain, and it is this protein that is going to be phosphorylated by myosin light chain kinase.